Hi hey YouTube and welcome to part two of this um, podcast I did with Chris. Look, if you're, if you're still watching this, Chris, um, if you could put this in the reply section, it would be really appreciated. Um, if you don't, could you at least give an explanation? explanation for why um, and I'd like to uh, just say that all the footage of Chris's show is property of creation liberty and no copyright problems or anything like that are intended and I won't make money off this of course so I'll just uh, get into it and uh, let Chris start it off again well you see and what you said earlier was interesting because you said we don't need to know in order to be able to use them and right. to some extent I would agree with that what, you would, what you're doing is you're using them without any knowledge of what they actually are. And that's why, because my Christian, ex, my Christian worldview can give an explanation for those, you are forced to borrow from my worldview to try to argue against my worldview. Okay, so to a certain extent you agree with me that we don't need to know their origins we were talking about to use them, because everybody uses them. That's how we actually effectively communicate. You know, the fact that A equals A and is not non-A is inescapable. And uh, look, uh, I know what they are. Um, you've really got to explain yourself a little bit more because I've, I've said it, I've actually said them quite a few times now. So I know what the laws of logic are. And to think that I've just got to go from it from a, a such a narrow point of view as yours to have any understanding whatsoever is just incredibly sanctimoniously arrogant. Mm -hmm. And so what, all I'm saying is that you can't, from your atheist, if you ascribe to the atheist worldview, which you claim you do, the atheist worldview cannot possibly give, I mean, they can't even approach this question with rationality on explaining the laws of logic. The laws of logic, and I'm going to make the accusation that the atheist, I mean, the laws of logic can't even exist in the atheist universe. No, Chris, it's you that keeps saying that I ascribe to this uh, atheist worldview. I mean, really, whatever it is, it's just another another presuppositionalist concept that bandies around the fact that, that you think there's, you can only choose one of two options with your worldview. Well very very narrow-minded and uh, uh, for you then to turn around and say these laws of logic can't even exist in the atheist worldview well you've just cited before that they can and we can use them so once again i really have to ask you what are you talking about of logic would be unchanging and universal in a constantly yeah. changing uh, environment here we go again. I mean, what's this constantly changing environment you keep talking about? That, you know, just like, you know, for example, you, you can't say that the laws of logic work the same in every way, and even then, they just become conventions for, I mean, I've, I've heard, there's many atheists I've spoken with personally who tried to say, well, well, they're just useful for the purpose of discussion. Well, then they just become social conventions, and that means they're subjective to anybody's opinion on what they want to think of them, which means they are changing. They're constantly changing. Well, yes, you can say that they work the same in every way all the time. That's what makes them laws of logic. Um, I, you don't, we don't seem to be on the same page with this. And as far as these atheists you talk to who said they're, you know, they're just useful for um, conversations, they are essential for conversations. Our whole ability to communicate effectively revolves on these concepts. It, it's just once again oh my god you really have to narrow down what you're talking about because i don't think we're talking about the same thing okay so we've agreed that the laws of logic um, are not subject to opinion okay we, we've finally come to a consensus consensus on that and i know you will because in order to i mean you have even in order to have agreement you have to rely on the laws of logic and so what i'm what i'm asking you is how you can begin to explain the existence of the laws of logic. Okay, so we're back to this. So you have to um, explain them again uh, in this atheist worldview. Uh, in the in the video, I, I went back to the fact that the, their origins are, are not that important. Okay, you, we use them. They apply. They always apply, and no matter what, um, they could they could have come out of a giant space cheese ball for anybody knows but I'll stick to the def definition I gave previously and that's that they're an emergent property of this universe and reality that we live in and the rules that make it up 
Okay, that is my definition for these laws of logic, and that's all I can give. Okay, so here I've brought up the fact that um, it's actually the Christian worldview or the religious worldview where nothing's for certain. And I referred back to uh, the, the part, uh, bits in the Bible where, the, where God um, stopped the earth rotating so, you know, the sun uh, didn't come up for a little while. You could squeeze more out of a day. Now, if you if you subscribe to a deity who's capable of, of things like that with, with no regard to the laws of physics whatsoever, then anything can happen in your worldview. It's just at the whim of your chosen deity. So uh, I think you guys are the ones that have uncertainty, okay? People who don't subscribe to a, a deity can just rely on the patterns to keep emerging rather than some big deity jumping in to stuff it all up. But you see, you're, now you're referring back to biblical scripture, and I only use biblical scripture within a worldview in which it makes sense. So all you're really telling me is that before you even pick up scripture and look at that first page, before you even do anything like that, you presuppose that it's true. That's it. It's true because it's true because that's your presupposition. You've explained nothing. Okay, all this, all this ragging on me for explanations about logic is a waste of time when you've got a set of reasoning skills that incorporate that type of thinking. It's just ridiculous. Okay, but you see, I'm only ma I'm making the uh, I'm only understanding the Bible within the worldview in which it makes sense. Analyzing it from the atheistic worldview, which is what you're doing right now, it can't make any sense because it can't give an explanation for the laws of logic. Okay, so the Earth stopping ro rotating on its on its axis makes sense to you because you just accept it as true and and it happened. It can't. I can't make sense of it from my atheistic worldview because I can't explain the laws of logic. Come on, really? That this is an incredibly crazy thought process you're going on here. And you've got to stop moving the goalposts, Chris. What explanation for the laws of logic do you want? I, keep, I could keep reiterating that I don't know, which just means I don't know. It doesn't mean there's not an answer. Or I could give, just give you the emergent property definition again. You've got to work out what you're talking about. I'm not, I'm not asking you for origins. I'm not asking you for all the specifics of the laws of logic. I'm just asking you to begin to explain them. And, and every atheist I've talked to and every debate I've listened to, they get stuck on this issue, which shows that the atheist cannot give a rational approach to this question. Okay, so it's not about specifics. It's not about origins. What is it, that, what is it about then, Chris? Honestly, you keep moving the goalposts. What exactly do you want me to answer? And look, What's this, what's this little pop-up you've got happening down here? I'm not saying the atheist does not use logic. I'm not saying the atheist has to tell me where laws of logic come from. I'm asking, how do you justify unchanging immaterial laws of logic in a constantly changing material universe? It's not a difficult question. It's just one the atheist worldview cannot even begin to answer. Honestly, Chris, I've, I've not only begun to answer it, I've given you answers, and it's it's like you're just not hearing me. And what is this changing material universe thing you keep going on about? You've got to accept the fact that you're not really asking me anything. You talk a lot, but you're not really saying anything. You have to really work out what is the question you're trying to ask. Because, man, I don't think you know. Well, that's surprising. You are the first I have ever heard even say that they would concede that. So basically here I've just thrown in the towel. I, I, I conceded to Chris's point even though I didn't really know what his point was. Um, it just the sophistry and ridiculous concepts that were bouncing around were just a total and utter waste of time. And I think we should be wary of these type of conversations because essentially people do a lot of talking but they don't really say anything. And it's, uh, Chris, you thought you were asking me questions but you weren't. You were just... You were trying to back me into a corner where you wanted a specific answer to some ambiguous question that I don't think even you knew what you were talking about. So the, what I'm saying is that the, the presupposition, the Christian presupposition, 
is required to even have a conversation about logic and science and truth. Okay, well, so you, before you can even discuss things like science and all that sort of thing, you got, you've got to be a Christian. But you have to be a, a Christian from particularly your point of view, which I've, I've all, always said is just your opinion on, on interpretation of opinions. And that's the only way you can really sort of get any real sense out of these subjects. Is that really what you're trying to say? That is ridiculous, man. I, I can't believe anybody would really assert that. Look, hey, look, whatever floats your boat, you, you go for it, man. That's incredible. Okay, but you can only claim that it's an opinion when uh, you're you're trying to use laws of logic to say that's my opinion, which which there. And round we go again. Honestly, Chris, you you're like a dog chasing its tail. I mean, this these concepts that you're proposing are just incredibly ridiculous. I mean, honestly, to to even start discussing logical thought and the ability of a person to reason we have to somehow stuff it into your little narrow-minded point of view is just incredible to me i mean unbelievable no actually that's based on biblical scripture that's where we get into that type of discussion on you know what now we're we're no no now we're comparing religions and now we're trying to see which one actually has the truth and which one can be uh logically um logically sound but you see from the atheistic position, um, there's nothing that can be, I mean, just like what you were saying, you, you, had, you said you had conceded to that, there's nothing that can really be explained because there's no, there's no way to explain the laws of logic within that worldview. And so what happens is that, I mean, we can get into discussions of what does the Bible say and can this be matched with reality, but then we would have to do it from a Christian worldview. We can't do it from an atheist worldview because it can't account for anything. 